Hey, y'all, you guys got on a run? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. You haven't been breaking the news, have you? <laughs> I said, I don't want to break this. I don't want to break it to you, but um, you're not really doing all right. Um, I don't blame you, though. I don't, I don't read the news. I gave up. I gave up a while back, actually. I just, these days, rather than read and follow the news, what do I do first thing when I wake up? I just bang two large rusty nails straight into my eyeballs at the same time. <laughs> It's a budget emergency. Uh, if you, you know, we've got to share the heavy lifting. If you're young and unemployed, that means you you, you contribute by starving for uh, six months. If you're Gina Reinhardt, you contribute by. Um... No, no, it was something else. No, it's gone. No, that's right. It was it was by and taking millions of dollars in taxpayer subsidies. I knew it was something. Like, that's a big relief for the tax department. You don't have to deal with that cash. They don't have to hire extra accountants. We know they don't waste on something idiotic anyway, like, you know, dignified life for disabled people or some crazy shit. <laughs> so I'm not quite up to speed on the, I'm not up to speed on the latest in Australian politics, but as far as I can figure out, uh, the key question in Australian politics in 2014 is, um, what drugs is Clive Palmer on? <laughs> <laughs> and where did we get some? Because that bloke is, that bloke is off his chops. Like, he just, you never know what he's going to say next. He doesn't know what he's going to say next. My only concern with Clive is what's going to happen when he eventually comes down. Because <laughs> it had to be the aide that's going to break the news to him about what he's done. Like, <laughs> Clive would wander in one day holding his head going, oh Jesus, man, oh my, was I wasted? Like, what did I do? Well, well Clive, it's, um, you know, it's a little hard uh, to, um, hard to know where to start. Uh, well, you, you formed a political party and ran for Prime Minister. What on earth did I do that for? Well, Clive, you said uh, that the ordinary man needed someone to speak up for them against the elite. <laughs> against the elite. I'm a billionaire. Oh, I know, Clive. I know you. Are. I know. I know. But, but you said, Clive, and I'm just quoting. I'm quoting you here. You said uh, billionaires are an oppressed minority. <laughs> to keep the government-funded uh, renewable energy scheme. I'm a coal magnate! I despise clean energy! What else is it? Anything else? I mean, come on, just tell me. I haven't gone soft on China, have I? <laughs> no, Clark. No, 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 no. You've, uh, you, you've remained pretty solid on the, the China question. Uh, but there is more. Uh, I don't, you might want to take a seat, um, but you, Clive, I don't quite know how to tell you this, but Clive, you've, um, you've got this new boat. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you feel about dinosaurs? Because <laughs> that's the politics, it's, it's this government, like it's not just, like it's not just how cruel they are, it's how incompetent and stupid, so incompetent and stupid that they're getting the run around and put on the ropes in Parliament by a man whose idea of a wise business investment is to rebuild a ship that sunk a hundred years ago in the worst maritime disaster in human history and turn it into a tourism attraction. A man whose idea of like, a, like he wants to build a, the ultimate holiday experience. So he builds, like, he builds his resort and he's got his hotel where people can sleep, got his golf course, people can have a bit of fun. There's a, there's a swimming pool, something for the kids, there's a cocktail bar, something for the adults, but something's missing. What does it mean? What's needed to give the punters the ultimate Gold Coast Resort experience? It concludes, I know, a theme park filled with giant robotic dinosaurs. <laughs> that's, that's, that is like the prime performer in Australian politics. Like, you know, that's what gets me is that's not just that we're getting screwed. 
is that we're getting screwed by dingbats. <laughs> you know, like, everyone's doing it tough. I mean, everyone's under threat. You know, but there's one sector, I think, of Australian society that doesn't get really under threat, doesn't get the recognition it deserves. And I, I don't know they can uh, survive the Abbott government. And that's, um, that's political comics. <laughs> Because these biases do the best material themselves. <laughs> this is a self-proclaimed government of adults, headed by Tony Abbott, and featuring Christopher Pine and Barnaby Joyce. <laughs> you don't get bigger jokes than that. This is a this is seriously like um, Tony Abbott's Minister for Women. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Pine is um, he's Minister for Education. <laughs> and Senator Cory Bernardi exists. I mean you can't you can't write that stuff. Like you know, like um Bernardi, Cory Bernardi, he's the nuttiest, or he's the biggest the diddiest of the dingbats. You know, like he's this guy actually argued, he 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 says you can't let gay people marry with each other. Because if you do <laughs> Next thing you know, people will be wanting to marry animals. <laughs> Which is clearly ridiculous, right? Like, it's insane. Like it's Because sure, sure, we all know, barnyard animals can be a bit fun. <laughs> but they're not marriage material. <laughs> It's just common sense. This is how out of touch these bastards are with modern values. You know, it's like Corey, it's not the 1950s anymore. We don't have to marry all of our one night stands. <laughs> I looked out, I, I knew the Indian crowd to appreciate a good bestiality joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, you still don't look about you. I mean, no, 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 no. <laughs> the, ma the madness never stops. Like, that's the thing where, like, you know, recently, like, you know, the last week, it's been, it's been Team Australia. Tony Evans been going, oh, everyone's got to get on board Team Australia. When I heard that, I just thought, what dickhead? gave Toby Abbott a DVD player and a copy of Team America. <laughs> <laughs> you know, cut that shit out. I know you think it's a hilarious practical joke, but that bastard makes laws. <laughs> you know, if you, 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 you can't get me law, and then, like, you know, the next day Joe Hockey says the poor don't drive, and you realise there's no bottom, there is no end. You know, but it also reveals just how desperate and, and how weak they are, because, for example, Team Australia, that was to get, uh, support for the anti-terror laws, in order to do that, they had to drop what was pretty much their key reform, which was to legalise bigotry. Um, <laughs> which understandably really pissed off the bigot community. <laughs> Seriously, like National Bigot Spokesperson Andrew Bolt was fuming. <laughs> you know, and, and that's pretty much, like the bigot community is pretty much their key constituency. I mean, like, what have they got left? It's like bigots and mining magnates who aren't like promos. <laughs> That's it. They're all getting desperate. Even the media, like the Murdoch media. Like last, yeah, they sort of, they sort of just. Last week, the Herald Sun ran a headline and it was screaming two words really loud. All it said was, "Jihadi bludgers." <laughs> <laughs> Scrape the whole about there. Like, you know, like, okay, something fits on election stream or something, get some benefits. But actually, I really, I'm a big fan of that headline because to me, that, that headline implies that the Herald Sun would be a lot more favourable on Islamic terrorists if they just got off their asses and got a job. Sure, sure, they may be wanting to kill all the infidels and impose Sharia law. But at least they pay their taxes. <laughs> I mean, just a, like, and the worst is when they go international. Like when yeah, they, they stomp around the world stage, like beating their chest. Like, yeah, like Abbott, like this week he was, you know, he intervened into Scotland's independence referendum. <laughs> See, I don't even, this is the, this is the church 
sweating cells. I haven't even got anywhere near the punchline. <laughs> 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 I'm remembering the best story. <laughs> yeah, because it is, it is that silly. It's that, you know, I told the British media that uh, supporters of the yes vote are enemies of freedom and justice. <laughs> is long and you know like it's, it's a bit hard to judge in that English moment. Maybe when history looks back, maybe it will record that of all that of all the greatest violations of freedom and justice, the three that stand out are Pol Pot's Cambodia killing Jews, <laughs> Sahado's East Timor ge genocide, and that time they let the Scots vote for whether to become the independent <laughs> Starts like, but don't get him started on Russia and Ukraine. Like, he called a press conference last week, right? Because Russia had all its troops on the Ukraine border, and he put, called the press conference to say, in no uncertain terms, to Russia, <laughs> that if you invade Ukraine, there will be consequences. Vodka <laughs> <laughs> will be bad. <laughs> that Vladimir Putin is in his office in the Kremlin um, without a shirt on <laughs> uh, wrestling, wrestling a bear you know, because it's a Tuesday <laughs> and like an aide rushes in and says Mr. President, Mr. President what? What do you want? Can't you, can't you see I'm wrestling a bear? How many times have I told you don't interrupt your president what is wrestling a bear? Oh, I know, I know, I know, Mr. President, but, but you see, it's, it's the Australians. <laughs> the Australians? Why didn't you say so? I'm sorry, bear, this is going to have to wait. What, what did they want? Oh, Mr. President, they said under no circumstances can we violate another nation's sovereignty. The Australians said that. <laughs> I mean, the, the nation that fully supported and took part in the US, illegal US invasion of Iraq based on lies that killed a million people. Yes, Mr. President. That's them. <laughs> I mean, the nation that got exposed for, for illegal spying on East Timor, the poorest nation in all of Asia, so they could better screw them in uh, negotiations over oil and gas royalties. Yes, Mr. President, the nation has also, also been caught violating repeatedly its maritime border with Indonesia to force desperate people back on unseaworthy uh, lifeboats in, in secret operations and to kill at least three people already. Jesus Christ, man, there's no time to waste. Get me the military on the phone right now. If the Australians think this is morally wrong, we're pulling out. <laughs> But the truth is, we all know if any aide ever bothered to even tell uh, uh, anything Abbott said, the response would almost certainly be, I'm sorry, uh, why do we care what Austria thinks? Yeah, <laughs> 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 uh, you know, like, like the freedom stuff, you know, like Abbott was, you know, like, uh, he's really big on liberation. He spoke at a dinner recently. Uh, earlier this year to a bunch of uh, logging company representatives where, where he spoke passionately about the need to liberate um, old growth forests from existing, presumably. And he called them, he called the logging company representatives the ultimate conservationists. <laughs> what did he do the next night? He a dinner of tobacco company reps to hail them as the ultimate cancer fighter? Before, before calling a press conference to hail Twiggy Forrest as the ultimate friend of the unemployed and tax department alike? <laughs> no, it's just, and he said this, he said, green ideology is destroying Tasmania. And he uses his evidence that it has the lowest life expectancy and education attainments in the country. Which is fair enough, I think, because it is a well, not all the experts agree. When it comes to, like, short life expectancy, the key cause of premature death is an overabundance of trees. <laughs> <laughs> Too much foliage and you just lose the will to live, much less bother with a uni degree. <laughs> and it just goes on like a 
asylum seekers. It goes on with, you know, like they're just asylum seekers or you know, poli their policy, or as they call it, border protection, right? Because sure, sure, fleeing torture is one thing, but that, what right does that give you to violate an imaginary line on a map? <laughs> no, you know, imaginary line. Like, no one cares about the imaginary lines on the map. You know, it's all very well to flee, being afraid for your life. Why doesn't anyone think of the imaginary lines? <laughs> they got rights too. <laughs> you know, and that's not even the craziest thing they say about it. The craziest thing they say about asylum seekers is the most ridiculous. In fact, Morrison was taking this hearing yesterday where he was saying it repeatedly was that their policy is actually, they do it all, actually, because they really care about the lives of asylum seekers. <laughs> they actually, they're really concerned about the dangerous trips that they take. And I just, every time I hear that, I just think, fucking hope to God these bastards never take any interest in my well-being. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then about I find myself told, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, well you were, you were about to cross that really busy intersection while the little man was still red. Uh, and it was a really dangerous looking trip. And so we kidnapped you and dumped you on an isolated island with thousands of other desperate people in, in conditions the United Nations condemns as, as, as hellish mental health breeding, self-harm breeding hellholes. And you know, you never know when you're going to get out. And if you ever do get out, you're certainly not coming back to this country. We're just going to dump you on some third world country that hasn't got anything like the resources to give you anything like a decent life. So you just live out your life rotting in utter misery. No, don't thank us. <laughs> just do that job. Just, you know. You know, maybe buy us a beer sometime. You know, that's, that's thanks enough. On the global scale, though, they are amateurs when it comes to insane arguments, um, despite their best efforts. They don't, they don't have the experience a country like Israel has. Um, <laughs> no, because Israel, Israel has been saying now, ever since the start of this latest offence, it's been insisting, it's been trying really hard. It's basically, it's going to mean sense this, their representative says they're trying really hard to avoid civilian casualties. Now, I'm not an expert. But it does strike me that if you want to avoid civilian casualties, a place to start might be not killing civilians. <laughs> like, maybe don't, don't bomb UN-run schools filled with civilians you told to go flee there. Like, that seems to me to be a major tactical failure. And I feel like I can give them some advice, because I go, I go through my day without killing civilians. <laughs> and I'm not even trying. Like, <laughs> well, I say no civilians. I think I need mean, to kill a couple of the neighbouring flat and a mortar strike on Tuesday, but that... No, they were playing Coldplay to your album really loudly. And I've got a right to defend myself. No, and I called them beforehand. I'm civilised about it. I said to a civilised people, well, I told them I'm about to bomb you flat. Maybe you should seek shelter in that school at the end of the street. Then I shelled the school. But I had to because I had intelligence that told me there were fresh copies of Coldplay's new album there. <laughs> Turns out it was wrong, but I can't afford to take that risk. Because no people on earth can be expected to tolerate Chris Martin's moaning about how Quinn had done him. And so really, it's Chris Martin's fault for using those people as human shields. <laughs> But the worst thing that gets me is when go governments of any strike, when they have the goal, they do all this shit to you, then they have the goal to turn to you and tell you that maybe, uh, well, you, you know, the, you know, the, pretend they care about your health and tell you to drink less. That's the one that gets me. Because I hear that and I just think, no, fuck you, you're why we drink. <laughs> you see fucking Joe Hockey's stupid face at 9 o'clock in the morning, you turn on the TV, and you get talking about, you know, poor and you just think, when do the pubs open? <laughs> You know, and it's just, you know, I, I never liked it, like, even before this guy, because they, they come out with these drink-wise ads, and I don't like the drink-wise ads, because they always, I can't relate to them, right, they always about teenagers. They always about teenagers going out, uh, having fun, teenagers having sex, I can't relate, like. <laughs> Except for the 
ones where drunk teenagers get in fights. I like that. No, because I like getting fights with drunk teenagers. I call that revenge. No, I like to find drunk 15 year olds in the park late at night and just go up to them and like push them and say, hey you! Yeah, when I was your age, drunk 15 year olds beat me up. Let's see what happens now. Of course they beat me up again. Which is why I don't trust the government. Because I've seen those ads, they can barely stand up. They've got no coordination. I've watched those ads and I think, man, even I can take these pricks. No. No, no, no. Let me tell you, a drunk 15 year old can do some damage. The Cardi breezes with the groin hurts. You know, is that nuts? There was one, I mean the teenager's sexing was a real one they did a few years back. I couldn't believe when I saw it, it was actually trying to tell teenagers, don't get drunk or bad things will happen. The bad things that happened in this ad was two teenagers had sex. <laughs> I, I don't know how effective that one proved to be. <laughs> but I'll tell you now, if I'd seen that one when I was a teenager, I'd have been putting vodka on my cornflakes. <laughs> I'd have been leaving home with my hip blast, taking one last shot and hope that maybe today is going to be my lucky day. Like... And again, they're lying. It's bullshit. I think back to those year 11 parties, I couldn't have been drunker. <laughs> you know the kind of guy who up in a year 11 party that starts at 8, turns up at 5 past 8, like, starts sculling green by 20 in the night, like running around the party going, oh, lying semi-comatose in the back garden, covered in dirt and vomiting on the petunias. <laughs> you know, just lying there shaking convulsively. You know, just sort of like growing pool of vomit in front of you and you're so gross the ants have taken like long. <laughs> you pretty much vomit and all you've got to vomit, so you just dry erect on the last little bit of bile. <laughs> I think that all, all those, all the nights ended up like that, you know, covered in dirt and vomit and vile. And I think, you know, back in year 11, I just think, you know what? Not once did I pick up. <laughs> so fuck the government, lying pricks. <laughs> but I do want, I'm going to finish pretty far, but before that, I do want to say that I don't want to just end on the government. Like, you know, the left just, all they do is criticise, all they do is mock. So I do want to say, there is actually one drink wise hand. That, that I actually, I like that. In fact, it did actually, it's the only one that made me rethink uh, some of my lifestyle choices. And it's, it's the one, it's been around for a couple of years, you might have seen it, it's the one where like, the dad's at the barbecue with his mates, oh, I had you brought up last night, oh, you're a bit rough. And he sees his son, he says, son, go get your old man a beer. The son goes to the fridge, gets the beer. By the time he comes out, he's turned into a dad. And he says to his kid, when he sees his kids, oh, you go get your old man a beer. He goes to the fridge, gets a beer, comes out, he's a dad. And this goes on for four or five generations in the full end. I saw, when I saw this, I just thought to myself, Jesus, I'm really going to have a kid. <laughs> so I never realised they could be useful. <laughs> the only problem I see with this plan is the amount I drink, the little prick will be dead before he finishes preschool. <laughs> so my plan is to have a dozen. <laughs> like get working shifts. There's a, just to clarify, is that the, there's no one here from child welfare, is there? <laughs> no? Good. Because <laughs> what happens at the Green Left Weekly, at Bottle Lips now fundraiser stays at the Green Left Weekly, the Bottle Lips now. <laughs> Alright, look, this is a weak, oh, it's gonna be, look, this is a really weak government. We don't actually have to take this shit. This government is not politically strong whatsoever. And if we can get our shit together, by the time we come to do this next year, we can be free of these lame jokes on, lame puns on Abbott's name, right? And for that reason alone, that's another reason to bring this bastard down. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the rest of the night. Thanks a lot. Hello, Sands, everybody.